Hello. Well, uh, today I'm gonna do uh, another video about uh, Batman uh, not being Bruce Wayne, and actually it's uh, Bruce Wayne who is Batman. Um, I made a video some time ago about this topic, and um, re-looking at it and also thinking about it, and even with the points I made, um, I thought were good. Um, I just kind of wanted it to be a bit better, like some clarification here and there. Um, so I do have some stuff uh, written here, but uh, basically I just wanted to say, like, uh, Bruce Wayne is not the mask. It's Batman. That's the point I wanted to, to make initially. And um, while it wasn't a bad video, at the same time, again, you know, more clarification, and not just in the comments section because that could be like you know, uh, you could just redo it. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I did it some months ago. I'm gonna do it again now. So. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> basically, begins with you know I've always believed that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Reason being, uh, me even just saying this is because whenever I hear someone say Batman and Bruce Wayne, it seems to imply uh, from how I've heard many people talk about the subject. Batman has always existed in Bruce's life, and that is just false. Um, now, people uh, may not intend for this to be the case, and not meant to take Batman as is Bruce Wayne. Uh, you know, they don't mean that to be literally. You know, they don't mean it in a literal sense. But the way I've heard people talk about it. And I've seen it a couple, some of the, not really a couple times, uh, fairly often on the internet uh, when such a topic arises or somebody sort of, when talking about Batman, kind of make that into a point and that become just sort of a vocal point in the conversation of even if it has nothing to do with anything, that becomes like the vocal point of it. You know, Batman is Bruce Wayne, and the way they talk about it and write about it, it seems as if, in a very literal sense. I'm going to stop here, because I wanted to point out that, you know, perhaps, you know, that's not the case. That That's not what people want. They don't intend for it to be that way. But, um, <clears throat> again, that's just how it seems. Uh, when I've heard people talk about it, they seem to mean it in such a way that, uh, you know, that's it, how it is. He's, he's, he's Batman. He's not Bruce Wayne. You know, can't be. It's impossible. Uh, and again, I wanted to preface and emphasize more. Because I think this is one. This, that was one thing I did not think, but I know I didn't preface preface enough and clarify that this may not be the case. But it's just how people talk about it, and whenever the conversation of such a topic is brought up, or they bring it up, they make it as if that's the case and it's an absolute fact, and no one can deny it. Um, so again, just wanted to clarify that for you all, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, Batman came about when Bruce was around 28 to 30, you know, depending on the time or the storyline we're talking about, you know, that could be the, about his age. Um, like Batman Begins, 
he was 29 when he became Batman, because in that movie, we see him at, like, a party for his 30th birthday. And, um, yeah. And seven years prior, he was traveling the world and learning the ways how criminals thought and acted, you know, and he trained and fought in order to become what he does in, you know, Gotham, when he becomes Batman. Uh, so, you know, the whole point of being Batman was because his parents died when he was eight years old and he witnessed it. He witnessed them dying. He witnessed them murdered. You know, he went through years of dealing with, um, with all that on his own throughout his childhood. And when he was an adult, he finally decided he was going to do something. Now, granted, you know, there was Alfred, but, you know, to help him with, but so there were certain things that, you know, Alfred couldn't help him with. Certain things that, you know, he had to, uh, um, figure out on his own. Uh, so, he went through years of dealing with that on his own. He decided he was going to do something. You know, he wanted, he was going to do something so that it, what happened to his parents, you know, didn't happen to anyone else in Gotham. And granted, that's a big task and virtually impossible, but he wanted to make the effort of reducing such a crime happening again. So he traveled the world, learned how criminals fought and acted, learned how to fight and the way he fight when he became became Batman and just take all of this knowledge he learned and go back to Gotham and fight the injustice that goes on in that city. So all that being said, Bruce Wayne was still Bruce Wayne for eight years with his, when his parents were alive and even throughout his the rest of his childhood and teenage years and adulthood you know, he was still Bruce Wayne, albeit a changed Bruce Wayne due to, uh, you know, witnessing the death of his, of witnessing the deaths of one's parents in front of their eyes is something that's going to change them forever, you know. Now, he, was he hollow inside from that? Sure, who wouldn't be? Um, you could say he even died inside. But again, you know, some people literally make that uh, kind of statement when one makes it, or even just that kind of fact that one could naturally assume from such a situation that Bruce himself died. You know, not just inside, you know, the old him is no more, but... He literally died, like he too was killed, physically. Uh, how some take it, uh, again, not everybody, but there are some that when they phrase things, when they talk about things, when they write about things regarding this topic, they make it as if he physically died there too. Which, obviously is preposterous because he becomes Batman, but still, that's how, when you hear and read some of the stuff that some people write, that's, that, that seems like, uh, it seems like that's what they mean. Um, uh, and even if they don't, they just uh, haven't phrased things right. Um, um, now, you can say from that moment he tried to find a purpose, which we basically have established at this point Bruce wanted to get rid of the criminals of Gotham yet couldn't just join the police force or anything of the sort because the GCPD is very corrupt and though it's very unlikely a billionaire would uh, ever become a cop in the first place 
you know, that as well. You know, it just it wouldn't seem likely that a billionaire would have a company that's successful and also would have um, so a trust from, from the, his parents. You know, it just wouldn't seem like he would become a police officer. It just it wouldn't seem to fit him, you know, or uh, fit that kind of M.O. with his upbringing and sort of status of the city just wouldn't really make a, a whole lot of sense for him to become a, a cop exactly you know is he a detective sure you know he's the world's greatest detective that's what the nickname of Batman's um, another problem with him I have of him being dead in that alleyway is due to we don't truly see his upbringing in the comics. We've always seen him where we see his parents die, and then it's pretty much he's an adult and Batman. You don't really see a whole bunch of stuff happens from that moment on. Maybe you see a little bit of Bruce like at the funeral or after the funeral a little bit as a kid, but then you jump to when he's an adult. Like Batman Year One, he's back, and then you see him doing some fighting moves and practicing what he's learned over the years, and you know, then he becomes Batman. Um, you know, so another thing I would like to suggest is. What if some of the narration Bruce Wayne gives about him being Batman isn't the most reliable? What about Alfred's perspective? I mean, surely he has one, seeing how he raises, raised Bruce ever since he was eight. Why don't we hear from his side more? I mean, he's just as important uh, uh, to Batman. I mean, you know... Batman and Bruce Wayne, you know, they're able to do some of the things and certain things they're able to do, or he is able to do them, talk about as if they're two different characters, but they're the same character, but you know what I mean, you know, his personas, you know, he's able to do what he does because of Alfred, you know, getting the personas, like, split, he has, like, three personas, but Bruce Wayne, you know, uh, this is another thing I kind of want to touch on, you know, like, sometimes Batman, when there's narration and it's his, sometimes makes things a bit more, you know, dreary, uh, uh, in a word, in a sense. You know, he makes things seem more grim than they really are in his life. I mean, yeah, he's fighting criminals and he wants to end all of the crime murders and stealing and this and that, you know, he wants to end all of it, but, you know, in a way, he actually himself made this for himself. He put himself there. No one else did. It's him. He put himself there, and if he wanted to, he could pull himself out of it, but he doesn't want to. He gets it once he becomes Batman, and he's able to unleash this anger, this sort of beast inside of him that's been raging since he was eight. You know, it's like this thing. He's now able to find an outlet for this anger, and now he doesn't want to just stop it. Um, you know, he finds the means to do so. Like, if he ever gets married, has a family, things in the city are pretty good, police aren't corrupt. You know, and in a way, he, he sort of because of Batman existing, he sort of doesn't want to give that up, you know. Um, so, yeah. You know, you don't really hear a lot from Alfred's perspective, you know. You know, and I wrote in there that I felt like I was getting a bit off topic with that, but, you know, I digress. It was just, it's just something like, you know, it was a thought that popped into my mind. What about Alfred? You know, because in sometimes some of the comics, he does what he can to try and pull Bruce out of this darkness he made for himself. 
as Batman. And, um, you know, he made this for himself and, well, Alfred doesn't exactly always or sometimes ever try to stop him being Batman. He tries to pull him back into reality, like, things aren't always as bad as it seems. You're making certain things worse for yourself to help with this. To help fuel, you know, being Batman and as if that's your only existence and it's not your Bruce Wayne. Um, they play that up in the Dark Knight trilogy throughout the films. And um, culminated, you know, with the Dark Knight Rises with Alfred leaving because, you know, he's not Batman anymore. You know, you're Bruce Wayne. And in a way, he was always Bruce Wayne, except he, when Batman came about, he got lost. And Alfred, throughout the trilogy, is trying to pull him out of it in this, in a way that's saying, like, you know, well, yes, you can be Batman, but you have to be Bruce Wayne also. There needs to be a balance there. And Bruce himself hasn't found that balance for himself. He can't balance it out. Exactly, because... Once he gets into this darkness of Batman, he can't get himself out of it. Or perhaps he just doesn't want to. Like, he could if he really wanted to, but he just doesn't want to, it seems. So Alfred's there to kind of keep him in check and pull him out when he seems to be going too far. Um, you know, and him leaving in the Dark Knight Rises is to... Just try and make it clear that, you know, in that movie, he sort of wanted to die, or didn't really care if he died, at least. You know, he might not have wanted a death rest, but he's kind of like, you know, for some time, you know. Uh, it didn't seem like he had much purpose, because, you know, while Batman was being hunted, uh, he wanted to have a life outside of that uh, Rachel, but, you know, she died, but, you know, even if she didn't, she was gonna leave, she was gonna be with Harvey Dent, she was gonna marry him, and, uh, you know, and even in the Dark Knight, he's trying to find a way to not be Batman anymore, you know, that was Harvey Dent, that was his, in a way, that was his way out, <laughs> he can, Harvey Dent is able to do all the good he's doing, Batman's not needed anymore, you know, but, uh, anyway, that's just some examples from the movie that they kind of incorporate that element from the comics that isn't always, um, given much attention, um, I know I kind of also seem to go off topic more, but, uh, I feel my point was gotten now with the some of the movies of Batman uh, into this to help try and uh, make sense of this, if uh, that makes sense. So, where are we? Do -do -do -do. Okay. At some point in his 20s, you know, he, was, he decided he was going to finally do something about the criminals in Gotham. An idea that was most likely floated it around in his mind since his parents died, but he now decides to actually go through with this plan that has formed over the years, And because, you know, sure, when he's eight, you know, he's sad, he's grieving, he's wishing, like, maybe I could have done something, or maybe this could have done this or that, and they would have still been alive. In the midst of all that, he could have been like, you know, he wants to do something to, so this doesn't happen to anyone like him again. Um, he spent his childhood as, as Bruce Wayne, uh, was broken, angry, most likely, you know, feeling really dead inside. You know, he's dead inside. Angry that he was a kid couldn't do anything to stop them from being killed. And now as an adult, he can do something. He can only become Batman to unleash his anger that's been 
burning in him and that helps fuel his desire to end crime in Gotham, you know. One may think Batman is Bruce Wayne, but he's not like Superman or Wonder Woman. He wasn't born with his parents being dead and a desire to end the crime and corruption of Gotham. He wasn't born with superpowers. You know, he never has had any superpowers, but he has resources, he has money, he's able to use his wealth to acquire gadgets, create gadgets, vehicles, acquire them, or any mixture of the of any of these. Um, yeah. You know, the desire of him to end crime and corruption of Gotham was something that came later in his life. And it was sparked by witnessing the parent, the murder of his parents. Uh, I could keep going, but I think I've made my point. And uh, again, I believe I did as well. And um, I think this video was a lot more clear and more. Yeah, it was better understanding of what I was trying to get at, you know. Um, stopping here and there helped. Uh, and I do think that Alfred, the, the stuff about Alfred is very important. In the comics, you often don't hear as much from Alfred's side of things. I mean, you do hear, but not as much as, you know, you would, uh, might imagine because of how important he is to Bruce Wayne Batman. Um, you know, it's just uh, it's just something that uh, I thought about, and I also for some time wanted to redo that this video. You know, make another video about this topic um, because while well, the other one wasn't bad. Uh, no, no. I think it was a bit longer than it needed to be. I mean, now if I keep going and just talk about whatever, uh, it will probably get to that length, but, you know, it's a bit shorter. This video is a bit shorter, and I'm glad. Uh, I was able to condense everything, you know, reading my notes and going off, off of my notes on some other things I had thought of. Um, yeah, anyway, that's what I think. Um, that's what I've thought about this matter for quite some time. Perhaps you agree, maybe you disagree. You know, again, maybe it's not like, oh, it's not me, literally, but again, some people, the way they talk about it and describe it, it sounds as if that's what they mean. It sounds as if it's supposed to be take, taken literally, even if that's not what they mean, the way they say, they talk about it, the way they write about it. It just seems as if that's how it's supposed to be. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Because uh, no. Bruce Wayne, as I mentioned, only has three personas. There's Batman, obviously. There's the Bruce Wayne that the public knows, who's the rich, arrogant billionaire, who's uh, the, pe the playboy... It's like seems to be self-absorbed, only cares about himself. And then there's the third version, which is his true self, which is the one who really cares about people. Who very few people uh, get to know. You know, Alfred obviously, um, Lucius Fox. I would say probably knows, has seen the the real Bruce, the real kind, caring. Bruce, who cares about people of the Gotham. Um, you could even say perhaps Selena Kyle has seen the real Bruce. Um, and in the Dark Knight trilogy, um, Rachel saw the real Bruce. Um, you know, there's very few people who he gets close to. 
who really know him see the real him and not just the personas he makes and puts on so with that little closing uh, little tidbit I think that's really it uh, I have nothing else to say except you know have a good day have a good week and uh, until next time just keep on living and having a good time